Welcome to the SCP Foundation. We secure, contain, and protect. I am 05-4, and if you're watching this video, it's because you're new to this foundation. So, let's start off strong. Uh, we're going to be getting to know personnel classes today. Uh, the first and foremost is Class E, uh, as an echo. Now, Class E is a provisional class given to field agents and containment personnel that have been exposed to potentially dangerous effects during the course of securing and containing an anomaly. Um, this typically happens over initial containment or newly designated anomalous objects, entities, or phenomena. Uh, these Class E personnel are to be quarantined as soon as possible, monitored, and screened for potentially harmful changes in behavior, personality, or physiology, and may only return to duty after being fully debriefed and cleared by psychiatric and medical staff. Now let's move on to Class D, which some of you are. So Class D personnel are expendable personnel used to handle extremely hazardous anomalies and are not allowed to come into contact with Class A or Class B personnel. Class D personnel are typically drawn worldwide from the ranks of prison inmates convicted of violent crimes, especially those on death row. Class D personnel are to be given regular mandatory psychiatric evaluations and are to be administered an amnestic of at least Class B strength or terminated at the end of the month at the discretion of on-site security or medical staff. Uh, in the event of a catastrophic side event, Class D personnel are to be terminated immediately except as deemed necessary by on-site security personnel. So let's move on to something brighter. Class C personnel. Now, Class C personnel are personnel with direct access to most anomalies not deemed strictly hostile or dangerous. Class C personnel that have had direct contact with mind-affecting anomalies or anomalies with mimetic properties may be subject to mandatory quarantine and psychiatric evaluation as deemed necessary by security personnel. This may include a demotion to Class E status during the quarantine. In the event of a containment breach or hostile action against a Foundation facility, non-combatant Class C personnel are to either report to a secure lockdown or be evacuated at the discretion of on-site security personnel. This is especially true in the case of a site-wide breach or other catastrophic event. Now let's move on to Class B. Class B personnel are those deemed essential to local Foundation operations and may only be granted access to objects, entities, and anomalies that have passed quarantine and have been cleared of any mind-affecting effects or mimetic agents. In the event of a containment breach or a hostile action against a Foundation facility, Class B personnel are to be evacuated to a designated secure off-site location as soon as possible. Now, oh, Class A. Class A personnel are those deemed essential to Foundation strategic operations and are not allowed direct access to anomalies under any circumstances. When circumstances require Class A personnel to be in direct proximity to such anomalies, such as in the case of facilities housing containment units, Class A personnel are not allowed access to the areas of the facility containing such anomalies and are to be kept in secure locations at all times. In the case of an emergency, Class A personnel are to be immediately evacuated to a designated and secure off-site location. Zero five council members are always Class A personnel. Next up, security levels. Level zero, for official use only. Level zero security clearances are given to non-essential personnel who have no need to access uh, information regarding anomalous objects or entities in Foundation containment. Uh, this access is typically held by personnel in non-secure clerical, logistics, or janitorial positions at facilities with no access to operational data. Now, level 1 is confidential. Level 1 security clearances are given to personnel working in proximity to, but with no direct, indirect, or informational access to anomalous objects or entities in containment. 
of one's security clearances are typically granted to personnel working in clerical, logistics, or janitorial positions at facilities with containment capability or otherwise must handle sensitive information. Level 2. Restricted. Level 2 security clearances are given to security and research personnel that require direct access to information regarding anomalous objects and entities in containment. Most research staff, field agents, and containment specialists hold a level 2 security clearance. And that brings us to the hot and heavy security clearances, which most of you will likely never see. We have level 3, which is secret. Level 3 security clearances are given to senior security and research personnel that require in-depth data regarding the source recovery circumstances and long-term planning for anomalous objects and entities in containment. Most senior research staff, project managers, security officers, response team members, and mobile task force operatives hold a level 3 security clearance. Level 4, top secret. Level 4 security clearances are given to senior administration that require access to site-wide and or regional intelligence as well as long-term strategic data regarding foundation operations and research projects. Level 4 security clearances are typically only held by site directors, security directors, or mobile task force commanders. Level 5, Thaumiel. Level 5 security clearances are given to the highest ranking administrative personnel within the Foundation and grant effectively unlimited access to all strategic and otherwise sensitive data. Level 5 clearances are typically only granted to the 05 Council and members of selected staff. Let's move on to titles and job descriptions. You'll be working with a lot of new personnel and it might be helpful to get to know what they do around the Foundation. So. Staff titles. Uh, we have containment specialists, which have two main roles at foundation facilities. Uh, firstly, containment teams are called upon to respond to confirmed cases of anomalous activity to secure and establish initial containment over anomalous objects, entities, or phenomena, and transport them to the nearest foundation containment site. In addition, foundation containment engineers and technicians are called upon to devise, refine, and maintain containment units and protocols for objects, entities, and phenomena in Foundation facilities. That brings us to our next title, Researcher. Now, researchers are the scientific branch of the Foundation. They are drawn from the ranks of the smartest and best trained research scientists around the world. With specialists in every field imaginable, from chemistry and botany to more esoteric or specialized fields like theoretical physics and xenobiology, the goal of the Foundation's research projects is to gain a better understanding of unexplained anomalies and how they operate, so that we may explain them or neutralize them in the future. And that brings us to our next job title, Security Officer. On-site security officers, often referred to simply as guards, at Foundation facilities are tasked with maintaining physical and information security for Foundation projects, operations, and personnel. Primarily drawn and recruited from military, law enforcement, and correctional facility personnel, uh, security officers are trained in the use of all types of weapons, as well as a variety of contingency plans covering both containment breach incidents as well as hostile action, such as an attack on the Foundation facility from a group of interest. These personnel are also responsible for information security, such as making sure that sensitive documents are not misplaced and that a facility's computer system is safe from outside intrusion. They are also often the first line of defense against hostile outside forces for Foundation facilities. That brings us to our next job title, Tactical Response Officer. Response teams, or TAC teams, are highly trained and heavily armed combat teams tasked with escorting, escorting, tasked with escorting containment teams when dangerous anomalous entities or hostile groups of interest are involved. They're also tasked with defending Foundation facilities against hostile action. Response teams are pretty much military units that are stationed at major Foundation facilities, and they're ready to deploy at a moment's notice. We have field agents. 
field agents are exactly what it sounds like. They're the eyes and the ears of the foundation. They're personnel trained to look for and investigate signs of anomalous activity and often undercover with local or regional law enforcement or embedded in local services such as emergency medical services and regulatory organizations. As undercover units, field agents are typically not equipped to deal with anomalies or anomalous entities. Um, instead, once they have confirmed an anomaly or an anomalous entity, they will call for backup and a containment team uh, with the means to safely secure and contain such anomalies will back them up. So then we have one of the more sought after roles within the foundation that would be MTF operative, uh, mobile task force operative. Now, mobile task forces are specialized units comprised of veteran field personnel drawn from all over the foundation. These task forces are mobilized to deal with threats of a specific nature and can include anything from field researchers specializing in a particular type of anomaly to heavily armed combat units tasked to secure certain types of hostile anomalous entity. If you have the proper security clearance, you can actually access the SkipNet to review the MTF database uh, for the teams that are currently available and looking to recruit new members, if that's something you're interested in. So next, we come to administration. And the lower echelon of administration is the site directors. Now, site directors for major foundation facilities are the highest ranking personnel at that location and are responsible for the continued safe operation of the site and all of its contained anomalies and projects. All major departmental directors report directly to the site director who in turn reports to the O5 Council. So that brings us to 05 Council members, yours truly. So the 05 Council refers to the committee consisting of the highest ranking directors of the foundation with complete access to all information regarding anomalies in containment. The 05 Council oversees all foundation operations worldwide and directs its long-term strategic plans. Due to the sensitivity of our positions, we must not come into direct contact with any anomalous entities, objects, or phenomena. A rule that we are not good at keeping to, I'm afraid. Furthermore, the identities of all 05 council members are classified, and all council members are referred to only by our numerical designations, 05-1 through 05-13. I am 05-4. And it's not a ranking system or a council, kind of like a republic, uh, just to be clear. So anyways, that's all the jobs, all the classes, and all the security levels of the foundation. Remember, we're here to secure, contain, and protect. We die in the dark so that they may live in the light. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, uh, subscribe, and ring the bell if you'd like to see more. If you didn't enjoy this video, go ahead and leave a comment as to why. Uh, please try to keep your comments uh, constructive if you can. And, well, thank you so much. Have a good rest of your whatever.